this is the Rolling Reading Queen, and I'm here with Adiba Nelson, who wrote this book that I'm going to read to you today called Clarabelle Blue, Meet Clarabelle Blue. And it's based on her daughter, and, and it was written by Elvira Morando and designed by Eileen Serna. So, um, Adiba, tell yes. us what you can or what you want to about Clarabelle Blue. Why did you write um, this book? So, I wrote Clarabelle Blue for a variety of reasons, mostly being that I could not find any children's books that my daughter is very often. Uh, my daughter is a Black disabled girl. And, you know, I did what moms do on weekends. You go to the bookstore looking for books for your kid for story time and bedtime. And I remember asking the sales clerk if they had any books, um, kids in wheelchairs, so it's like the main character, kids with disabilities. And they kind of paused and looked at me and they're like, mm, no, I don't think we have any in store. And I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, so if you don't have any books with like the main character that has disability, you probably don't have any books where the main character is black and has a disability either, do you? And they're like, no, honestly, those don't even exist. And I was just like, what? Yeah. Um, this is a problem. And um, I left really annoyed, really, really annoyed. Um, and because of just who I am, my nature, I kind of went home and rage wrote Meet Claire Bell Blue. <laughs> and I was like, if I can't find one, I'm going to make one. <laughs> and um, that's what I did. That is awesome. That's fabulous. Yeah. It's a beautiful book. And I love that you wrote this sparkly pink happy little girl <laughs> while enraged <laughs> i think that's great <laughs> but it it i'm i'm sorry that we there's a lack of uh inclusive kids books although now it's you know it's it's uh, increasing but i'm so glad that you wrote this book Thank uh, you. when did you write it i'm sorry when did you write Clarabelle Blue? Um, so I wrote it in the summer of 2011. Okay. Um, but it did not become like a book that you have in your hand now until uh, May of 2013. Oh, wow. So that's a long process, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us more about that process. Um, well, it was interesting. Um, I had the book and I knew that I needed to get it illustrated. And um, so I, I think I just did like an online search of like children's book illustrators. And I found this one illustrator in Phoenix who had also illustrated my friend's mom's children's book. Mm -hmm. I contacted her and we were talking about rates. And I think, I think she was like $600 a page. Oh, wow. And I was like, I have a 12 page book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We like actual pages with illustrations and then like all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is not gonna work. Um, and my cousin who was in film school at the time had a friend who was an artist and was also in school and needed um, like an internship kind of. And I was like, why don't you talk to her? She's an amazing artist. Um, maybe y'all could work something out mm -hmm. and we did she needed the internship i needed the book and so she did the drawings for the grade that is awesome that is yeah. so cool she did same a great with, job they're beautiful she did a fantastic job. Uh, same with the designer uh she also needed an internship for her senior year and so used the book as her internship that is so cool. What is the difference? I know what an illustrator is, <laughs> but what did the designer of the book do? So the designer does the full layout, like where words are placed on the page, what font we want to use. Um, if you'll notice in the book, some words are a different size or different font. Mm -hmm. That's the designer call. Um, using the font on the title 
of the book because that's not a typical font that you would find in like your Word document. No, I love I love the font and I love how the E in Clarabelle Blue in blue right here, it's a little mm -hmm. tiny crown. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, oh, like, duh. <laughs> exactly. Um, also, my daughter believes that she is the queen of the castle, so it's it only fitting. <laughs> I know, Emery. She is me. So are you, but. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, we're a little competition. Um, but she also, the designer, also designed the entire back of the book. Um, and also, Yep, designed that. Came up with the idea for the seek and find, awesome. um, and on the inside back cover, back pages. Um, so they really handle all of that. What, how it looks as the final product is the designer call. That is really really cool. Yeah. So how can readers support you and your endeavors? <laughs> well, so there's a few different ways. Um, they can definitely order the book, which you can find on the website of clarabelleblue.com. It's available in English and Spanish right now. Um, if you are a viewer and you work for a nonprofit that um, either works with the disability community, community, with parents or with educators, I'm also a public speaker and I do keynote workshops um, all over the country around inclusion, um, around uh, disability rights and advocacy. Um, so you can hire me for that. Yes, I <laughs> definitely will. This, when, whenever we get to go back to school. Right, um, right. <laughs> I would love to have you come speak to my class. They would love yeah. it. And I also, it, as teachers, I do story time. I was great. in last year before the world exploded. <laughs> um, I was, I flew, to Virginia to do uh, two story events, um, one at a junior high and one at an elementary school. Actually, no, both elementary schools and an evening event at a junior high. Awesome. Um, I was also in South Carolina doing some school events. So um, I was, after the world exploded, I was supposed to be in Virginia again no. uh, doing some events with Girl Scouts. So yeah, I, I travel. That is so cool. That is so cool. Why do you think that these sorts of inclusive books are important, especially right now? So right now we're at a really amazing, albeit devastating time um, for our country. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're at a time where we can really make some hairpin changes and change everything. And what is more important than everyone being represented the fact that in 2011, I could not find a book for my daughter to be to see herself in, and 2020, aside from Goodbye, Hello, Dog, I think it's the only book still where the main character is a Black disabled female. Wow. And no disrespect to Goodbye, Hello, Dog, but <laughs> the main character is in a wheelchair, but the book is about the dog. Right. Right. That's very different. It is. Very different. Yes. Um, and while we're seeing more in the realm of uh, children's uh, television entertainment, where there are more disabled characters, um, still for the younger set, it's mostly uh, in the cartoon world, it's mostly the animals that have the disabilities. Interesting. Which is fine. You know, yeah. portrayal is portrayal. Oh, yeah. But. but a little girl is not necessarily going to identify with a puppy. No. Who is being personified as a right. person with a wheelchair. Right. Um, now, my daughter, when she sees those cartoons, she's like, oh, they have a wheelchair just like me, but it's different. Yeah. Because it's not a little black girl, it's not a little redhead girl. Um, the one that I say I feel is the most inclusive right now, as far as accurate portrayal, is Daniel Tiger, yeah. uh, where Prince Tuesday's cousin, I, wa I watch way too much children's television. <laughs> Some of it's real good. Daniel Tiger is fabulous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Prince Tuesday's cousin Chrissy uses crutches and leg braces. Oh. And 
they discuss it. They discuss like, um, why does Chrissy wear the braces? What can Chrissy do? Can she have fun just like us? And they do all the things and Chrissy gets into all the shenanigans. <laughs> so that's really brilliant programming. Yes. But right now, especially, we need more of that. We need mm-hmm. children to understand that just because someone looks different from you does not mean that they are. They're still um, worthy of the same sort of treatment, love. They need the same things. They want the same things. They have the right to the same things and they should be granted access to the same things. Absolutely. Um, and so with everything that's happening right now, it's so crucial. This is the time to start instilling this in children because they're going to have questions about what is happening. And what better way to help them understand than through children's literature and children's entertainment that is done um, with equity, with responsibility, um, and with uh, advocacy. That is so important. You're so right. That's that's the way to do it. That's the best way <laughs> to do it. <laughs> Don't like save you. the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Uh, you. Do you have anything else you would like to say? Um, buy the book, change the world. <laughs> we will. <laughs> we will. All right. Thank you so much, Adiba. Thank this you. is Meet Marbelle Blue by Adiba Nelson. You can find it on her website, and it the website is clarabelleblue.com. All right. Uh, thank you for thank watching. You. Have a great day. Okay, bye bye. So we just interviewed. Adiba Nelson, who wrote this wonderful book called Meet Clarabelle Blue, based on her daughter Emery, who is a little black girl in a wheelchair, who Clarabelle is based on. This is Clarabelle. I love how the font is not something that you would typically find in um, a children's book, and even how the E in blue right here has a crown. So, because Clarabelle is a little princess and everything is pink and just like a typical little girl might like. She has a giraffe and a teddy bear and she's wearing a tutu and has a little bow. She's just really cute. So let's learn about Clarabelle Blue. First, we have the dedication in the beginning. It says to Emery, that's Diva's daughter. You've taught me what it means to be fearless. I love you to the nth degree, darling. Oh, that's so sweet. See, that's Clarabelle, like based on um, Adiba's daughter, Emery. Meet Clarabelle Blue. Written by Adiba Nelson, illustrated by Alvira Morando, and designed by Eileen Serna. This is Clarabelle Blue, and she's just like you. She's got two hands and two feet, a smile just as sweet, Two eyes to see and hair that's super curly. She's Clarabelle Blue and she's just like you. Now you might look and say, "Uh uh-uh. Clarabelle Blue is different in every way. She uses a walker and sometimes a chair. And when she gets excited, her arms fly through the air. Clarabelle Blue wears braces on her legs and feet. There's no way that Clarabelle Blue is just like me. See, this is a little girl and she's wondering why Clarabelle Blue might be just like her. Hmm, let's find out why. Surprise, my dear, surprise indeed. Those are little tiny things called special needs. Special needs? Special needs? What does that mean? It means it takes her a little bit longer to do everyday things, like brush her teeth and comb her hair and even put on her favorite underwear. But like I said before, it's true. 
Clarabelle Blue is just like you. Isn't that silly picture? She's trying to get dressed, but she put her undies on her head. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she cries when she's sad, screams when she's afraid, and she laughed hysterically at the face her mommy made after she ate that sandwich filled with sardines and orange marmalade. Oh my goodness. <laughs> when she's on the playground, she loves to swing or go down the slide or do the double dutch thing. Now you might, you might say, double dutch thing? That's jumping rope. Clarabelle Blue is in a wheelchair. She has no hope. How do you think she does double dutch? It looks like she's trying to help by moving the rope, right? <laughs> and alas, my darlings, I tell you, you're wrong. Clarabelle can turn the ropes and sing the jump rope song. Mabel, Mabel, set the table. She likes ribbons and bows. Giggles like a hyena when you tickle her toes and even likes the sweet moments when she and mommy rub each other's nose. Oh, that's so nice. In class, she's smart and raises her hand. Even if she's not sure of the answer, she tries because she can. Clarabelle Blue loves to help out in the classroom, at home, or when she's out and about. Well, Clarabelle can't play Duck Duck Goose. Who says she can't? Says who? Says you? Clarabelle, Clarabelle's on wheels. Haven't you seen her speed? Clarabelle could be in your spot before you even got off your knees. Look at her run, look at her go so fast speeding across the classroom. See, I told you my lovelies, this is Clarabelle Blue. She's got little tiny things called special needs, but really she's just like you. And just like you at the end of the day when the homework is done and all the toys are put away, when your belly is full and your teeth are clean and all you can think of is good night and sweet dreams, Clarabelle Blue is most like you. She needs her mommy's kisses and tuck-ins too. Aww. Good night, Clarabelle Blue. I love you. The end. So that was Cl Meet Clarabelle Blue by Adiba Nelson. I hope you enjoyed this book. And if you did and you want to see what happens next, what book we're going to read next, I love you to like this video and subscribe to The Rolling Reading Queen on YouTube. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.